In today's tutorial, we're gonna be going down memory lane by taking some classic 2D cartoon characters and breeding some new life into them by making them look 3D using a free AI tool which I've covered before on this channel that is Tyler.ai. And later on in the video, I'm gonna show you how you can take some of these 3D generations and add some subtle animations to them using two other free AI tools that I'm gonna be showing you in this video. If you're excited to see this like I am, let's jump onto the computer and let's get started with the tutorial. Alright, I have Styler.ai opened here and as of the time of recording this video, they're still giving you 200 free credits when you sign up for an account and these credits are renewed once every week. So what we want to do is just go ahead and click on new project to create a new project. We can give our project a name and then you can choose your dimensions and aspect ratio depending on what you're trying to do with your project. In my case, I'll leave it at the default one over one aspect ratio. Now, like I mentioned in the previous tutorial that I did on this tool, there's several kinds of things we can do on this tool. We can do text to image, uh, but what I'm interested in doing is just to go ahead and import my cartoon character. So I'm gonna click on import images and then let's start with a classic SpongeBob. Okay, so I have my image fully loaded here. Uh, what we wanna do is go ahead and do the image to image, just like we did in the previous tutorial. Now, this time around, uh, instead of choosing the 3D style, we're actually gonna put the realistic style. But you can mess around with these other styles that they have here to see what it does with your 2D character. But we're gonna choose realistic because we wanted to actually try to get this to look as real. And then because it's 2D, that kind of converts it to 3D. The next thing we want to do is explain what it's in the image. The easiest way to do this is just have auto prompt where the AI tries to explain what it sees. So I like this description. As you can see, it's picked up there that this is SpongeBob and it's explained that pretty detailed. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on stylize. But before we do that, uh, there is this structure match and the structure match is just simply telling it how much do you want it to look like your source image. So in this case, I'm just going to crank that up to number one and let's see what it does. All right, so we have our initial generations. Now it has matched the structure quite well. It looks very similar. It's not the same image, but it looks very similar. But this doesn't look very 3D. So what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and reduce that structure match. I'll just put it to about 0.8%. Uh, and we'll go ahead and regenerate this one more time. All right, so now that I have reduced that structure match, you can see that we now have uh, a more 3D-like looking characters here. So you can select the ones you like, as many as you like. And then once you're ready with that, you just click on place on canvas. And that's gonna put it on the canvas, as you can see uh, right here. All right, now that we have our generation, there are a few things we can do. You can use generative fill, just like the way you have it in Photoshop to add elements in the scene or generative remove to remove certain things that you might not want in the scene. And also you could take out the background. We'll just try a few of these. So let's do a quick uh, generative fill. So I'm gonna click on that and then let's highlight here and let's probably add another fish. So I'll put a gold fish and generate and let's see what it comes up with. See, it's generated a few fish options here to add. And uh, I'm not sure this is a goldfish, uh, but I like the way this looks. It blends very well with the scene. So I'll just click on put on canvas and you can see that has added to the scene. So you can do that and add other elements to the scene to build it out to whatever your vision is for it. Of course, you can use the same thing to remove elements and also remove the background, but we'll keep it at that for now. All right, let's go ahead and try another example. Johnny Bravo was one of my favorite cartoons growing up as a child. I used to watch this a lot. So let's see what Johnny Bravo would look like in 3D. So you're gonna have the Johnny Bravo image uploaded here and I'm gonna do image to image. So it says a cartoon drawing of a man with spiky hair, wearing sunglasses, all of that. Structure match, still at one. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, so we have four different images here but these do not look 3d they still look very much uh like a cartoon character so i think the problem has to do with the prompt so let's tweak the prompt a little bit and try to get it to generate what we want to do so this time around i would actually remove a cartoon and i'll just say a 3d character of johnny bravo let's see if this gives us a better result all right, so now that we added 3D character and we put the specific word Johnny Bravo, you can see that we are now getting some actual 3D uh, versions of Johnny Bravo. And this look good. I like this with the spiky hair. Looks pretty good. I mean, I could totally see this being uh, what Johnny Bravo would look like if a 3D version of him was being created. 
All right, I'll select this tool and place it on the canvas. All right, once you're happy with whatever it has created, you simply just click on export right here and you can export your image. If you're enjoying this tutorial in any way or have learned anything from this tutorial, kindly do me a favor and give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more tutorials like this. Now let's head back to the tutorial. So a little issue you might notice with some of the generations from Styler.ai is that the resolutions sometimes are not that great. To fix that, simply just use any free AI upscaler tool. The one I love to use is called iloveimage.com. So we're gonna hop on, put our image on there and upscale it so that we get a little bit better resolution with our generation. So as you can see after the upscale, this looks so much better. The image has more detail and it's just clearer. So we can then take this now and start animating. So we've added a 3D look to these images. Let's try to add some subtle animations to this to make them come to life a little bit more. Now I'm gonna be showing you two new tools on this channel that I've not covered before. The first is called Genmo AI, and which is a tool that takes your images and converts them into videos. So I have Genmo AI opened here and maybe SpongeBob is not the best for this tool because it struggles with the geometry of the SpongeBob character itself. But I'm gonna upload another one that I did of a young boy, which might work best for Genmo. So what you want to do is just simply click on upload. You upload the image. So the AI is going to automatically try to describe what it sees. And you can add more prompts here to actually guide it on what you want it to animate. So if you actually want it to animate in only certain parts of the image, you can put that in the prompt. In this case, I'm going to leave everything default. And there's some parameters you can put here as to how much motion you want, how much you want it to preserve the original character. I'm going to put about 80% so it doesn't disrupt it too much. And you can also change and add some character movement. I'll put everything at default and then I'm going to submit this new one and then it's going to generate that. So this is the image I have right here of the 3D character. Let's see what it does with the animation on this. And here's an example of what we have as our final animation. On to the second tool that I want to show you today, which is probably one that will give us a little bit better looking, more usable animations for this style of graphics. It's called Layer Picks, which is a tool that takes your flat images and adds some subtle movement to them, whether that be a camera pan or some parallax effect. You can do that using this tool. To access it, you want to go to layerpicks.com. You get some free credits to use as of the time of recording this video. So I have it open here. I'm just going to upload our image of SpongeBob. And by default, you can see we have this parallax 3D like motion already given to the character. This is good for like social media showcase and things like that. And if you look right here to the right, you can change the different styles of motion you want, whether that be a zoom in, a pan or different types of camera motion. You can do that and regenerate your motion. And here's a similar one with our Johnny Bravo character with the background added to it. I'm Johnny Bravo, the smoothest dude in town. Is it hot in here or is it just me? Hopefully with this, you can take some of your childhood cartoon characters and breathe some new life to them just for fun or maybe to share on social media or take some of your own 2D drawings and give them that 3D look. Well, whatever it is, you enjoy. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.